Joining us on the Hallow Chambers and joining me in the studio today is an honorable member of the House of Representatives from Ogun State and he's Honorable Afolabi Afwakwe. It's good to have you on the Hallow Chambers. Thanks so much. Thank you for joining yeah, us. Yeah, and he's so also the ha Deputy Chairman of the House Committee on Social Responsibility. Now let's start with uh, the recent tax reform bills which has stirred a lot of controversy because of some issues that were raised talk to us on what side do you stand are you for the merits of the bill or do you see something wrong with the bill that has stirred so much controversy well let me let me thank you uh, if for the good of our country the bill is not a bad bill the bill the, the bill is looking at us harmonizing the collection of those bills unfortunately a member of Finance Committee and the FRS chairman came to educate us on that bill. I don't want the Nigerians to preempt that bill. I want we are going to full debate on that bill. We are going to have public hearing on that bill. But look at the man mentioned some things that to me is very, very germane. So we are calling we are talking of collection. Most of this tax that's been levied has been being collected are from different agencies. And if we are talking of different agencies, we are not thinking how do we harmonize this? Let this be responsibility of federal. We call it federal for now. We call it federal in real revenue. We are saying if I say something is federal. Yeah, we are seeing the, 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 the tendency for people to look at it as if that bill, that, uh, that agency is for federal government alone. But the money being collected is being shared by the Federation. Why can't you change the name to Nigeria Revenue? Revenue. That's why, that why we want to change the name. Beyond the name, beyond the end, we are looking at opportunity that, yes, some, a, 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 a lot of people I say different thing. But to me, I look at the bill. I've gone through some part of it, not, in, not the entire bill. But when the man came to actually educate us on the, on the merit of this bill, I discovered that the merit felt well the demerit of those bills. But I'm not, I'm not here to, to take a position. But I believe that by the time we start debating, discussion, on this bill, Nigeria will be able to see the importance. It's not about, about increasing or charging people more. No. Though it will also blow some, some, some loopholes in, in, our tax, in, in the present tax system that make us to have more money. But that not really mean Nigerians are going to pay more. Well, a lot of time this bill has, you know, been explained, and you know, Nigerians seem to, you know, get a great, uh, seem to have an idea of what it stands for. But somehow, some Nigerians still have their doubts. Why do you think that a lot of Nigerians, or some Nigerians, let me put it this way, seem not to trust, you know, the intent of this bill? Well, well, because uh, I, I don't, because of people. Are, Nigerians have lost confidence in government, sincerely speaking. There's no doubt. There's no doubt about that. Because most times, when there is a policy, and Nigeria policy is not about, about policy, about implementation. Most times, when people see things as a very good thing, it ended up to be a, another thing. So that has made Nigeria to believe that whatever you are telling them, until the things start to manifest, until they, they, they start to actually enjoy the benefits. For instance, you cannot blame Nigerians. Even when, we, like I, I, I told people, all Nigerians, all Nigerians, before I even believe that subsidy must go. All Nigerians. And the, the, the president took the, the, the bull by the horn by removing subsidy. But what are we still experiencing? Nigeria has not been benefiting or have been able to see the impact of this fuel subsidy removal. That's part of the issue. But nevertheless, there is no way you will, you will get a, there, is, there are always a, we call some things in, in economies, lag. When you plan something now, you don't expect the result immediately. 
Since Charlie speaks, we government support or subsidy. It will take some time before can, the, the fair can be felt. Now, Dango de Vani has started producing. I say, after all, we started producing locally. It ought, to, it ought to have changed. It cannot change overnight. It will take some time. But there is no way there won't be lag. There will be the, 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 the difference between when you play the policy and when people will start to feel the effect. That is the economy term. You are, there, there must be a lag. So people don't have a whole lot of, of policy came from government that ended up not actually achieving the desired result. And that's why people, people are not too keen. When you are telling them something they believe, to them, they have already a set mind that this will not come out well. But I want Nigeria to give our president a benefit of doubt. We want Nigerians to be better. We want our people to be comfortable. And I want to appeal to Nigerians. It is not easy. But let's have confidence in this government. And I think there will be light at the end of the tunnel. Well, everybody seems to agree that these economic reforms are necessary, but where it comes to play is in the case of implementation. Do you think that um, it is a case where the government does not really map out its plan of implementation rightly to, you know, ensure that this hardship is not really felt so much by the citizens? Well, I, want, I will agree in, uh, partly. Because if, 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 if the president not pronounced the removal of subsidy, in the last year budget, the, um, all subsidy was actually provided for till May last year. So whether you made the pronouncement or not, that government has statically removed subsidy. So you may not have enough time. If, 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 if it has been, been, been designed by the administration, probably we could have done it better. But whether the president pronounce it or not, there's no provision for subsidy beyond May last year. And as such, you have to you have to live by what you have. To me, I quite understand some things. But when you are looking at the visionary trend in the country, you also be afraid that our people surviving with their income and everything have actually gone up. Very, very difficult time for all of us. Everybody is actually, Mr. President is also, is also going to the same market with us. All of us are into this together. But it is a necessary thing. I only appeal to the government. You know, the government has put in a lot of palliative. But palliative are just all government measures. Palliative will not solve the, 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 the problem. We need long-term measures to solve this problem. And those long-term measures cannot, we cannot, we can't, we can't see it within one year. You cannot see it. Because government is believing we have to, to, to produce our food locally. Rice production is increasing in the country. But a lot of people still, still don't believe in, in what, we are, what we are producing here. And we need it. And, you can, and when, when, you are, when you face the problem with, of security, you are facing the problem of uh, electricity, those two things are key for, for production. Nigeria cannot continue to be a consuming nation. We must change from being a consuming nation to, to, to a producing nation. And how do we do this? We have to encourage a whole lot, a whole lot of things. I was looking yesterday, I'm going to be talking of... of um, uh, our, our uh, national grid collapsing every now and then. There must, well be, there must be a deliberate plan to change this. If you look at that national grid, it has been there for how, many, for, for how many years? For so long. And as such, it is a mechanic. It is expected that it can, it can pack up. And it's, it's already showing us signal. That means the present government must be prepared, will be preparing to get out of this because we cannot continue without the electricity without security we may not achieve anything a lot has been said and you know uh, what um, nigerians keep hearing is it will take time it will take time one big elephant in the room is the capacity that earning capacity it doesn't seem to increase with the level the standard of living now is 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 not is unmatched so how do you expect nigerians to overlook this even with little or nothing to take home with no nobody is saying Nigeria should overlook Sincerely speaking, 
uh, it's not affecting, I'm also a Nigerian, it's, affect, it's affecting all of us. Because people are not earning enough, we are in this part, part of the world, we depend on ourselves. That means people that are depend on us, the, 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 those that counted us, those, the, the, the halves, they have not now depend mostly on, on, on most of us for survival. And it's also telling on us. The issue is this. Uh, like I used to tell people, I'm not advocate of salary increment every now and then. I'm not. I believe we can do things in a better way. It's not about how much you earn. It's about purchasing power of the money that you do earn. I've told labor people, I've engaged them before. Instead of you asking for salary payment every now and then, why don't you ask for some other things? For instance, if you have housing scheme and as a graduate you can have a house to yourself, whereby you, you, you will be paying it as a mortgage instrumentally. The tendency of you to be looking for, mom, for money to start building your own house will not be there. If you can transport yourself from your office to your place, have your car, you can have credit facility, like what, what the, the president is actually introducing. We need to look at all this area because too much money in the economy we bring about inflation. There's no doubt about it. I'm an economist. All right, we'll still have more to discuss, but we'll take this quick break now. Don't go anywhere. We still have more for you on the program. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <music> Joining us, we have been speaking with Honorable Afolabi Afwakwe, and he is from Ogun State. He's the uh, Deputy Chairman House Committee on Corporate Social Responsibility. Now, you're one of the people who believe in the local refining of petrol. Do you think this is actually the answer to Nigeria's um, petroleum needs? And why do you think that um, all efforts to, you know, salvage this sector ha seems to have defied all odds? <laughs> Thank you. I believe in, in us to refine locally, but I don't believe government as business in government as business in business we need to encourage private sector there's no way no way we will be, we will be asking government to refine our product and get results we need the government doesn't have because everything everybody believe is government is government money is government fund and I still want I still want us to look at something. Illegal, Ill, people, when people have illegal refinery that is not legally recognized, and they do refine products, to me, why can't you bring these people together? What are they doing? What what technology are they using in refining these products? Let's learn from it. Let's see what if we just. Small place like this, somebody can refine. Little capacity. Allow the person to refine. Let nonsense people to you don't need the old money to go and build the refinery. Some people that, 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 that refine illegally, they are using some they do use some some they have a machine that they do use. How, how, how do they come about it? What are they doing? Are those the product being produced there good enough? They are not no all the are even finally. If they are not good enough, how can we improve on it? Let's go to public. Sincerely, if you give this, I mean, I mean private rather, if you give this to private sector to do, we will get results one day. Look at before the advent of our GSM. You go to to, to Nitel, you cannot call. And when when the things came on came on board, I bought my SIM. How many thousands of naira? Today's SIM is free. I can now sit down here, call America, connect myself to the entire world. For how much? But at initial stage, you are paying through our nose. Even when you spend one second, they charge you per, per minute. That is competition for you. 
Talk to us about your bill on establishment of a national farm settlement agency. How do you think this will improve the agricultural value chain of the country and also significantly and contribute to Nigeria's GDP? Thanks, thanks so much. I mentioned it here. The nation that cannot feel itself is not a nation. And we are blessed in this country. We have arable land. We have everything that we, that's needed to change the narrative of, the, of, of this country. Before the advent of oil, we are fully into agriculture. And look at Southwest. Southwest was developed fair agriculture. And what, should, what did the, the government of those they, they, what do they do? Farm settlement. The farm settlement bill is to, is to encourage production of agricultural produce. And how do you encourage production? If you are somewhere and government gives you infra infrastructure to develop that place, and, and, and that is not, it's not just about farm settlement and it will be agro-processing industry. That's what the bill is all about. You have a farm settlement and government will also give you agro-processing in more, they also set up agro processing same industry for you. So whenever you produce, you don't just sell your things like that. Process it, reform it. Let's show that it will add value for you. And all this will also discourage rural urban immigration. People that don't people people kept on coming to the to the urban area to find factual and nothing to to, to do. Let's encourage our youth. If you, if you give me good life in the rural area, I have electricity, I have Wi-Fi, I have everything that makes me comfortable. I would prefer to stay there. And there will be value chain. If I produce, if it's, if it's what I'm producing, I can network. There will be what you call economy of scale. If four or five of us come together to have, to have fish pond, for instance, we, we still save some money rather than the only individual to be struggling for it. And if you encourage this everywhere, before you know it, we have enough food to eat in the country. When you have enough food to, to eat in the country, you also not only have enough food to eat, you also have enough to export. And that means when this bill on fast, fast, fast farm settlement, it will increase our food product. It will give us that, that needed security. Food security. If there are food security, the insecurity situation in the country will also come that's low. One Got more that. thing before I let you go. As the deputy chairman of the House Committee on Social uh, Corporate Social, Social Responsibility. Responsibility, and what is the mandate of your committee and how have you been engaging in your oversight functions? Thank, thank you so much. Uh, it is expected that all corporate, corporate organizations should play a complementary role to, to complement the efforts of the government. Government cannot produce all amenities all, all alone. If you are producing somewhere, you are making money somewhere, you need to give back to the society. That's the essence of corporate social responsibility. But unfortunately, we don't have that corporate responsibility bill or a law that makes it compelling. What we are doing, we are doing just persuasive because we do it, we are just doing it for doing it, and we can use it, use it to, to claim some past exception. But that's why we've just laid before the House the Bill on Corporate Social Responsibility. What the thing is telling us is that you cannot be making money somewhere and are not giving back to the society. And I think we have been able to go to two, three places to see what they do, as well as the oil sector. You know, we also have a way of affecting their, their, their land in terms of farming, in terms of, of, of their health. And if that is, is, if you are affecting them negatively in some ways, and you are making money from that area, then you must be socially responsible to, 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 to them. We went to, to, to Sahara Energy, we went to Sahara, and, and sincerely, most of them are trying. They are trying vis-a-vis -vis the fact that there's no law, they are doing persuasive things and they are still doing it. But to me, we have a lot of things we can achieve with this social, corporate social, social, social responsibility. If you are giving back to society, insurgents, um, bad behavior, of course, you can, you can engage people there, you can give them jobs. If you are, we are working some, 
if, if they are produced somewhere, I want to ask you how many of they are indigenous have you been able to engage? You want to bring people out of the streets, engage them, let them get something doing, let them be honey a living. When they are a living, they also they also protect your company because you are the one you are going putting food on their table. They will protect you. But if you if you are not giving back to them, the the the, 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 the every tendency that they can revolt against you. And if, if that happens, you also lose in many ways. So we are encouraging that is why in the wisdom of the ten ten leaders the, the ten assembly leadership who being led by our right honorable Reporter General Abbas is set up this corporate social responsibility as a committee that we can stand alone for be able to look at what they do. Because we are still having that sitting problem of bill and things like that. We've not been able to achieve much. But I know the next few years that committee is committee is committee to reckon with committee to work is committee that can add value to the government. Government cannot prove I went the last one we went, I know the the the, 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 the provide electricity for that Place the only thing I mentioned that they should improve on was the father. I led that, that I, I, I led delegation there. My father, you call somebody so, somewhere, hospital, but nurses are not there. The drug, drugs, so I will we administer those things. I, I will change those narrative. I think it has improved. We've told them. We may also, you will also need to engage people and be paying them for the purpose of making this thing to be functional. If you have a place, you have drugs, you have everything, but there is no, no nurse, no doctor. That means, it's, to me, it's an ordinary building. And we've changed those narratives. And, and I know that we're not relent until we're able to achieve it. That is our program for today, but that is not all from TVC News. We're always here to give you breaking news and information you should know. Follow us on all our social media platforms to keep up with our news, programs, and current affairs. Thank you for watching. I am Tijesu Adili. See you next time.